or one question you do one thing on, another question you do another thing on, it's going to get pretty confusing, right? If you really don't know it. Um, so right now is the time to start spiraling this information, going back and start studying for your test now. I know it's in two weeks. Start studying for it now. Okay, so with, with this example, yes, we're rationalizing, but we need to simplify first. Now, our numerator, yeah, we can't really simplify that. Denominator, though, yeah, we can simplify the 32y squared. Do you know what the fifth root, root of 32 is? Yeah, because two times, five times gives you 32. How about the y to the 12th? Can you simplify y to the 12th? Y squared. Y squared comes up. What now? Y squared on the outside, y squared inside the measure. Okay, how am I going to break that up so that I can simplify it? Of course, the 32, I'm going to leave that. Let's break up y to the 12th and go through this process. Y to the 12th, we should know how to do this pretty well. What am I going to write y to the 12th as? Y to the 5th. Y to the 5th. Oh, we know the fifth power of y is going to simplify with the fifth root of y. That's why we're doing y to the fifth there. So in our expression here, we'll have, remember, do you, does this look familiar, by the way? I hope so. We've done that a lot. This gives you the 2. This gives you a y. This gives you a y. We cannot simplify the y squared. You get a fifth root of y squared. Don't lose that fifth root. So in our expression here, we'll get 2y squared, fifth root of y squared. I'm just going to rewrite this right here so I can use our rationalization later. Okay, raise your hand, feel all right getting down that far. Good, guys on the left hand side of the room, are you okay with this? Okay, good. Now we're going to rationalize. Can you please tell me now? Well, now that this looks a whole lot better, since we don't have a huge fifth root over here, we just have a much nicer fifth root. What exactly are we trying to eliminate here? Fifth root y squared. Are we trying to eliminate the, the two y squared? No. This is why we did this to make it easier on what we need to rationalize, so we don't have something so big. So if I'm going to rationalize the denominator here, it means I need to multiply appropriately. Now here's the deal. I need you to notice that if I multiply, I don't need to multiply by this at all. It's not in a root. That's great. We're going to leave it alone. But if I multiply by the fifth root of y squared, just like this, what's that going to give you? You're still going to have this 2y squared for sure. But inside of our radical, you'd have a fifth root y to the fourth. Are you agreeing with me? Yep. Is that going to simplify? Are, are you with me here today? Yeah. I'm not getting hardly anything from you guys. I need more than this. Is that going to be simplified? Yeah. Okay, so what do you want that to be so that it will simplify? Yeah, we want that. If we want this, this piece is wrong. What does this need to be in order to simplify that? Y cubed. Okay, that's right. So y cubed here, we're going to be getting y to the the fifth power. So on the right hand side of the room, does this work when I just multiply it by itself for this process? Does that work? You got to be a little smarter than that, right? You got to be a little smarter than the, than the problem. You can't just do the same thing here that we did here because you got a different root. Square roots are great because you can multiply them by themselves and we eliminate the roots. However, when you give the fifth root, you still have to match up the power with the root. So we got to look at this one, figure out what we need to multiply in order to get a fifth power in there. That's the way we're going to be able to simplify this expression. Same thing has to happen on the numerator. We'll be getting a fifth root of x squared y cubed. Last thing we're going to do is make sure that we have the same exact power and root. We'll simplify that. How much is this? going to give us, ladies and gentlemen? Y. Good. So let's see what we have. Fifth root x squared y cubed. We still have a 2y squared. That hasn't changed since this part. But this right here is going to give us a y. 
Of course, we can write that just a little bit better. We'll have a fifth root of x squared y cubed, and we'll have 2y cubed. Did we do it? Did we successfully get rid of the square or the, the fifth root? Yes. Yeah, not altogether, but on the denominator, absolutely. How many people feel okay with this example? Good. All right, that's that's good. That's better. Why don't you try that one? Do the same exact. It's very very similar. Do the same thing that we just did. I want you to simplify the roots first. Simplify them first. Then rationalize what you need to. Keep working, I'm going to give you the step-by-step. -step. I'll give you a new step about every 10 seconds. That way we can check to see what we're doing. What's that need to be to work? X squared. This needs to be an x cubed? Call me x squared. Okay, because we want the x cubed. Right? So we can't just do this. That's not going to simplify. What we have to do is that we made it that far. That's fantastic. That's very good. By the way, this doesn't have to be in any particular order. If you wrote the x squared first and the z squared, that's fine. Okay, it's commutative. Cube root of x cubed, absolutely. We got x times x squared. We know that's going to simplify. Be careful, though. This doesn't go away completely. This actually gives you an x. So you have 3x here. This gave you an x. So you get 3x squared. Did you get 3x squared? Awesome. All right. Do you feel okay about this? Okay. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about in this section is that word up there. That word says conjugates. Can you say conjugates? Conjugates. Or if you want to be fancy, conjugates. Yeah? A little bit. No, I'm just kidding. It's conjugates. Uh, here's what a conjugate means in general. Now, we're going to use a specific form of conjugates in our, in our radicals. Here's what a conjugate is for us, though. 
if you have x plus y, a conjugate is a very easy idea. It's a very simple idea. It says that take the same exact expressions, but you change the sign in the middle. That's what a conjugate does. So if you have x plus y, the conjugate would be, what do you think? That's it. That's a conjugate. And if you had x minus y, the conjugate would be x plus y. All it says is you change the sign in the middle. These two things are conjugates. Now, why are we going to be using conjugates? Here's the cool thing about conjugates. When you multiply them together, you get something like a difference of squares. Do you, do you remember that? Doing that x plus y times x minus y. Recognize that if you were to distribute that, if you did x plus y times x minus y, the middle terms will simplify out of your expression. You with me? That's kind of cool. It's actually really, really neat. That happens every single time. That's why we use conjugates. Because when we're faced with something like this, and I ask you to rationalize the denominator, I ask you to rationalize the denominator, well, here's the, here's the issue. Hope you're with me on this. Here's the issue. The issue is I can't just multiply by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5 anymore. The reason is, if I did that, sure, I'd get 3 root 5 in the numerator, right? But I would have to distribute. Do you see that? I have to distribute that if I multiply by the square root of 5. I'd have to distribute that. Here would be great. You would get 2 times 5. But here you get the square root of 5. And so you'd still have that square root somewhere on the denominator. That's not appropriate if you're trying to rationalize the denominator. Do you see the problem here? So I can't just multiply by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. That's not happening for me. What I have to do is somehow eliminate this root altogether. The idea is I'm going to use a conjugate. What I know is that the conjugate will eliminate those middle terms that still have the root in it. We're going to see this right now. So to rationalize, you're going to be multiplying by the conjugate. And of course, this means on the numerator and denominator. You see, we're still multiplying by 1. We are still multiplying by 1. But now it's going to be a more advanced thing for us. Not really advanced, just the thing we need. It looks more advanced. So let's go ahead and see this. If we're trying to rationalize the denominator, which means get rid of all the roots on the bottom of our fraction, well, we're going to have to multiply by the conjugate. Can you tell me? If we, if we look up here, what's the conjugate of this expression right here? Root 5 minus 1. What was that? Root 5 minus 1. What about the 2? Oh. Still need the 2. Still need the 2. The conjugate takes the entire thing, the, the entire expression. It says the conjugate is, if it's this plus this, we're going to change it to this minus this. Right? So let, let's all focus again. What is the conjugate of this? How does it start? 2. 2. And then what? And then what? Minus one. Minus one. That's the conjugate. That's exactly right. It looks identical, except for the sign in the middle. Raise your hand if you understand the idea of a conjugate. Good. That's fantastic. Now, for us, a conjugate has to go on both the numerator and denominator. You see, if we, if we just do this, we've changed the denominator, and now the value of my fraction would be different. Now, the question, is the top going to be plus or minus? What do you think? Minus. Of course, yeah, minus. If it was plus, you know what? That wouldn't make